up here. Hi guys, I'm here with Airbnb host slash property investor Miguel Russell. And for the last few years, he has really lit up the real estate industry in Ocho Rios. And we're here to find out how he did it and why he did it. All right, so Mr. Russell, what did you do before coming to Jamaica? Um, before coming to Jamaica, I was actually into properties anyway uh, in the UK. We used to buy properties from the auction, flip them, put them on long-term rentals, that type of thing. So I've always been into properties, um, but then I decided to come to Jamaica. Uh, actually, it was actually on a, vac a two-week vacation. I came to Jamaica and ended up spending two months, you know, um, and just, just fell in love and just, you know, started from there. Okay. All right. So that leads me to my next question. Why Jamaica? Why Ultra Rio specifically? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, for me, Ultra Rio is like the heart of Jamaica. You know, I mean, I feel like anybody that wants to come to Jamaica has to come to Ultra Rio. You know, you've got Don River, you got Mystic Mountain. You know, what I mean, it's in the heart. If you're going from, if you're coming from Kingston, going to Mobay, you know, what I mean, it, it's just like the heart for me. Um, and I was actually at a family member's property during the time on that on that two week vacation, and um, and I was actually looking over with this beautiful, beautiful view, you know what I mean? And it actually just took me. Um, and the reason I was actually in Jamaica at that time is because I'd done a bad deal. Uh, I ended up buying a property in the UK that was unmortgageable from the auction. Um, and you know what, I'd, instead of crying about it, I thought, you know what, let me just come back to Jamaica and revitalize myself. You know, car, when you live in overseas, trust me, the yard's like a revital when you're coming over, you know what I mean? Like you got drinking jelly, walk upon the beach, you understand? Them, that kind and flex, you know. So I was here, you know, um, and I thought, you know what, I might as well do what I'm doing in the UK, in Jamaica, you know. Um, and then I kind of, that's when I first started to hear about Airbnb, you know. Um, yeah, so that's really how I, how I ended up in Jamaica and why I chose Jamaica. If the average person speaks to you in the street, they may think you, you're a Jamaican. Is it that you're a Jamaican or do you have Jamaican heritage? Um, yeah, so basically my parents are, are, are Jamaican, you know, um, but I used to come to Jamaica growing up as a kid um, and, you know, some of my best memories were actually when I was in Jamaica growing up, you know, so it's always it been in my heart, you know what I mean, like, you know, growing up, coming to Jamaica and seeing those big houses on the hill and that, you know, it was always, you know, a desire for me to have that, you know, for myself, you know what I mean, so, yeah, so that's where I'm at with my, um, my nationality, but I'm actually born and bred in the UK, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, so people, he's not Jamaican. <laughs> Don't let the accent fool you when he, he switches. <laughs> Alright, yeah. that sounds good, that sounds good. But how did you make the transition though from UK to Jamaica? Because, I mean, you can't just think of it and just come and, you know? Yeah, that's, how did you make yeah, it? that's a good question, you know. Um, I feel like it actually happened organically. I didn't say, you know what, one day I'm actually going to move to Jamaica. You know, uh, I brought my first property, of course, um, which I had a lot of interest in Jamaica at the time um, and then I was going back to, backwards and forwards to the UK you know probably spending like three months four months and then Covid come you know Covid come and I'm like you know what <laughs> I don't know if you can want to go back to the UK you know so um, you know I feel like Covid definitely you know was that point where I said you know what I'm actually living in Jamaica now like this is this is it for me I, you know I kinda, I'm kind of finished I don't want to wake up in the cold no more you know um, and I just decided to stay all right, all right so tell me about tell me about your first property where was your first property when did you get that first property and how did you go about getting it being that you're not from Jamaica mm. you know did you go through the banks did you just yeah. flip a house and, and yeah. use all of that money um, how, how did you get your start here yeah so basically I decided to um, liquidate a few assets in the UK because um, I knew that I really wanted to be in Jamaica after that trip I felt like you know I wanted to be here um, so I actually bought that property cash renovated it and um, brought it up to a very very high standards and then I actually remortgaged it which because the, the 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 valuation like it it could tripled actually you know um so i feel like from that moment on that remortgage process you know it took me about three to four months uh, during that time i was renting it short term um you know and and when i pull it on airbnb it just went off by storm it was like in out in out and i was like right this is actually working like they appreciate you know that that euro that european feel you know and then you know i just decided 
needed to start investing in, in more property and and that's how it really started for me okay you're wearing quite an interesting shirt you know i mean you said something about liquidating your assets just now and this is saying what assets over liabilities yes yes is, is this is this your brand or is it just a shirt that caught your attention uh, you know what it's a shirt that it's like i feel like i want to represent you know i want to represent what i'm about you know what i mean um apart from a shade living like because normally i have my shade living shirts on but for you know what i want to represent what i'm about you know i'm trying to inspire and motivate more people to get into this space especially the real estate market in jamaica because i feel like it's 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 undervalued and there's so much potential and there's so much opportunities for everybody not even just people from overseas for locals as well you see what i'm saying and a lot of the times everybody's actually focusing on going to the uk going into america and so forth but you know what the opportunities are actually in jamaica you know and as i said i want to try and inspire more people so that's the reason why i like to you know wear these shirts that represent what i'm about right now okay. you know all right you look like a very young individual how old are you and you know all right how old are you firstly because at your age based on how you look you may inspire a whole other generation that that feel like real estate and and, and these investments are just for the older folks you know for a person just breaking yeah. on the scene who who, who doesn't have the, the ability to liquidate assets and start from scratch like you did what is the suggestion that you would give to them? Um, so my suggestion is to them, I feel like there's, you know, the people in Jamaica, they're definitely getting money, like, because they come and they invest, they're, they're, you know, they're in Airbnbs, they're in all these all-inclusive hotels all the time. You know what I mean? So I don't feel like, I feel like if, if you really want that, um, you would definitely um, prioritize saving your money to invest. Um, and, you know, before, back in the day, mortgage rates used to be very high in Jamaica and it very, it made it kind of more realistic possible to get property but right now mortgage rates are at a very very low um, and the banks are lending they're throwing money out there you know what I mean so I feel like if you're serious and you want to get into this space it's definitely open for you whether you're a local whether you're a Jamaican it, it doesn't really matter you know right, so one may say you are still at an advantage because once people hear that accent <laughs> It's, 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 it's almost like the gate is already open for you versus a person like me who is here. I have no, no accent. I have no asset on the ground to say, hey, lend me your money. How, 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 how will a normal man like me just save enough? Because it's not like I, I'll be saving till I'm 50 before I'll be able to be at a place where yeah. the bank think it's, it's, I'm, I'm a person good enough to lend their money. You know, like, how, how would I go about it? Because I, I don't have the funds to liquidate yeah. my assets and say, hey, I'm just going to go into Airbnb. Head on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, as I says, you know what I mean? It's just all depends what you prioritize. You know what I'm saying? It's not really how much you actually earn. It's what you do with what you earn. And I feel that, you know, everybody's earning, but it's just what you do with what you're earning. Do you see what I'm saying? Into. So I feel like once you show to the bank that you're actually eligible to, to, you know, to pay a bill, whatever it is, you can start off just by taking out a credit card. You could start off by taking out something small and you prove to the bank, you know, that you are trustworthy and that you will pay your debts back. And of course, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's a process just like everything else in life. You know what I mean? Um, for me, I don't feel like just because I'm from the UK that I've had more opportunities than, than anybody else. I feel like I've just made the most of the opportunities what I had and I kind of focused on what I really wanted and what I really wanted was to be a real estate investor and I just used you know everything what I've learned back in the UK and I'm just trying to bring it to Jamaica you know to benefit my community because you know Airbnb is not even just about um, you know the host making the money there's so much outlets what host benefits the community so you know I, I, I tell my guests to go and support the locals go and buy you know your local fruits your local veg you know what i mean like i feel like this is the first time in history that you know jamaica can actually benefit from tourism because before you know even now you know a lot of the big massive hotels keep you on site and you can't even move nowhere you know what i mean and they actually 
promote you to stay inside, you know what I mean? Because they say it's dangerous and whatnot, but, you know, as I says, the Airbnb business is definitely, um, you know, it's, 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 there's just so much different avenues how it benefits everybody, you know? Yeah, that sounds good. I do like the point that you made about um, starting a credit, because a credit card is really, like, the easiest way to, to, to show the bank that, hey, you can lend me some money and I'll be able to pay it back in a timely manner and so on. And that's very true what you said about the resorts. Just trying to keep everybody on property and telling them how dangerous outside is. I've had many clients who they came to Jamaica and the hotel the hotel thing is just it's just not as authentic as just coming to an Airbnb have a local person cook for you or go outside and you know get fruits from the vendors jerk chicken from actual of jerk course. chicken um, personnel and so on so you make a very good point there yes very good thank point. you what do you look for when purchasing a property though uh, what I look for when I'm purchasing a property I feel like you know location is definitely a, um, a number one factor um, I also love those rundown properties so a Shea Living can actually put our stamp on it um, but I feel like as my brand's getting stronger and people are becoming more aware of it I feel like location is not that much of a deal right now because um, we've got something great we're working on right now and I feel like um, the location people will definitely come to wherever we are um, okay so are, 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 we, are we talking about Shea Living in the mountains <laughs> yeah possibly <laughs> possibly trust me there's no limit man there's no limit to where we can take at this point in time do you do you think we're at a place in the market where investors should really jump in yeah man you know what there's always you know opportunities especially in jamaica developing country so 100 percent, man i tell anybody who ever serious and that wants to get into this space just go for it you know there's no there's no limit just just do what you gotta do you know if I was to to start something like you right now, a DF Ishe living vibe, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the tips that you give to me as a, as as, as an, an upcoming person? In yeah, the um, I feel like you know. Um, I feel like taking action is, is definitely number one, you know what I mean? But you have to do your research. And I've actually found an awesome book that specifically um, guides people about investing in Jamaica because, you know, this market is, is totally different from any other market, you know? Um, so I definitely tell them to go and grab that book. Um, the book is called The Jamaica... The, guide to real estate investing in Jamaica um, the author's name is Sydney Davis and you can find it on Amazon you know what I mean and it's a great book it just has so much information for anybody who is new or even if you have experience it just details all the information what you need you know so I'll definitely tell them to go and grab that okay awesome What's on the books for Shea Living for the future? You know what, Shea Living, man, it's just like the sky's the limit, man. There's no, we're just, we're, just, we're just looking for those deals. We're trying to, you know, we're getting a lot of requests and I don't like to um, under deliver to my guests. Like, I want to make sure that I can accommodate all, anybody who asks me for a property. I want to be able to assist them, you know? So, um, you know what I mean? I feel like we're just working and we're just trying to get those deals, man. But to be fair, I feel like, you know, if you was, you know, thinking about going to a hotel, what what's the first name that would come to your head? If I'm being honest, I'm going to say Sanders, you know, for the ambience, the food, the service, all of that. Oh, it's my budget, yes, but, you know, that, that, that's probably the first thing that, that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm trying to get a Shea Living to a brand name so when you think of an Airbnb automatically you think you know what a Shea Living you know I want to get away for a girls weekend a Shea Living you know what I mean gathering with friends a Shea Living you know what I mean we want to just be there you know for the community you know what I mean and be giving them you know modern up to the time properties you know what I mean that they can just enjoy themselves and have a great time you know so that's really what we're pushing for man you know we're pushing for that alright so there you have it guys a Shea Living Miguel Russell, real estate entrepreneur extraordinaire. You know, tell them where they can find you on social media. Right, so look for him at Ishe Living. I'll put the, the the link in the description and so on. But this is Miguel Russell. Remember the name. Remember <laughs> Ishe Living. Yeah. Man on the move. Yeah, what? man. Much appreciate, man. Much appreciate, bro. Yeah, man. Respect, respect, respect.